Welcome. You are now watching Boss Lady News, highlighting businesses, nonprofits, events, talent. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Miss Britt Johnson. Hey everyone, and thank you for tuning in to Boss Lady News. I'm very excited. It is summertime, and I know you guys are having an amazing time. The weather has been crazy up and down. But before the fashion makes its way into the fall, we want to make sure that we speak to a few designers and find out more about the amazing clothing that is coming out of the New England area. So today we're going to be speaking with Sharelle Morrell, which is one of your designers. I know you guys know her. I'm following her on Instagram. She's had amazing pieces that have just, like, gone through the roof. She's got this one piece that I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get it. And the model that's coming out today, she's wearing it but in green. I'm not going to go any further with that because I'm, you know, I'm just in love with this outfit. We're also going to get a chance to speak with one of our amazing authors that's here. I've known her for a long time, but I did not know that she was going to be writing a book until the book dropped, okay? It's, a, it's 365 days, and it's got these amazing motivational comments in it. She's going to tell you guys more about it. We're also going to get a chance to speak with Kat Yang. I know you guys know Kat Yang. She brought Amy with her today, and she's doing more and more of her movie stuff. You guys, I'm like, can I be like a walkthrough or an extra or something? But we'll talk about that later, right? Brent is here. She's going to be giving you guys some more comments and tips and tricks in terms of your entrepreneurial spirit and your business. But like we always do, let's go ahead and speak to Cuban Mike. <laughs> wow. Hey. Oh. See, technically, we would have been matching today. I know. We switched outfits. <laughs> no. And I'm in one of... of uh, Royal Essence pieces. And you working there, looking like royalty there, girl. Thank you. Oh. So, what's going on? I know there's some buffoonery going on we yeah. need to know about. It's a lot going on, but I want to keep my mind on music right now, because it's been a great, great music month coming out here. Right. And I want to start with Drake. Um, you know, he's, you know, he's been going through a lot with a beef battle with Pusher. Mm -hmm. He, you know, where they got exposed about him and his kids and all this other stuff, but he, he was able to drop the album Scorpio. And it's the double CD, 25 songs deep. And for the fact that he did this in 2018, where everything is microwave era, you is very disposable. Right. I took time to hear the album, and it's a very good album. Really? I was very impressed with the album. Drake and is very monotone sometimes in his music. Did you feel any energy in this album? Well, this on the on the album, it's like a side A and side B. Side A is the first album, and side B is the the other side, whatever. Side A, you really feel him being all lyrical and he's really going in on certain things. Okay. Very subliminal album, so he's caught, he's taking shots on a lot of, on a lot of people on okay. that. Okay. So with, with that being said, um, I've come to the conclusion that this man is Teflon. He's you think so? To an, look, he's been having a 10-year run. He had this one comment or a, a Instagram clip that I saw where he sat down and he, he distinctly said that his mom told him before he responds to anything ever in life, to think about it three times. Oh, yeah. So the first time it happens, you think about it and you let it marinate. Yeah. And then the second time, when it comes up again in your mind and you're just ready to react, you're supposed to think about it one more time. Okay. Because now your, your reaction will change. And then the third time, when you're actually getting ready to react, which is what he did, mm -hmm. he responded with an album, which turned into money. Black and, man, get your money. And, you know, it broke all types of streaming records. I mean, it did numbers. Um, somehow, he managed to get a song with Michael Jackson. Yeah. Speaking of Michael, Janet's on tour. Oh, uh, I didn't even know that. Yes! I, I, what? I, I, Janet's on tour. I'm super excited. She's um, hitting the Essence Festival. That's the first performance or the first uh, location she's going to be at. But, yes, Janet Jackson is on tour. Um, yeah. She hasn't dropped a new album, but we also want to give our condolences to their family for the passing of Joe Jackson, Joe Jackson. her okay. dad. Yeah, rest in peace. And um, Cardi B, mm -hmm. um, she made history being the first female rapper to have um, two number one charting um, singles at the charts with um, Bodak Black, mm -hmm. and now she got the single I Like It Like That, and she's the first rap artist, female rap artist to pull that. And I ain't mad at her. I, I, I'm taking notes. I'm yeah. taking notes. And, and it shows again that hard, hard work beats talent. That's right. So I Hard mean, work beats talent. And she's about to be doing a baby, so congrats to that. Absolutely. And um, 
after 22 years, um, they're saying they're about to crack the case and make an arrest on Tupac's murder. Are you serious? Yes, yes, yes. 22 years later, there's a guy who confessed that said he was in the car and of the shooter that did the shooting. Mm -hmm. um, one of the guys confessed that there were three people in the car with him. Three of those guys are dead. Okay. He did something that kind of got him immunity, but since he did that in California, the crime happened in Vegas. So Vegas is trying to see if they could get a loop around to get him arrested for that. As Crime long is. as they catch the person or we find out who it is and how the linkage really does go back to potentially the government. On there that note, yeah, <laughs> on that note, we're going to cut to a brief break and then we're going to get a chance to speak with our first guest, which is uh, Celeste Vissiera. We'll be right back. See on page four that the projections need to be blood. Next Thursday? Seriously? Thursday? Can't do that. Uh-uh. This is really inconvenient. I have yoga that day. I have no time for this. So. I can't do Thursday, but I can do Friday. Disasters don't plan ahead. You can. Talk to your loved ones about how you're going to be ready in an emergency. Don't wait. Communicate. These are cool. Did you, um, what did you? Cost of family time activities getting you down? Hello, I'm Dr. Spruce. If you or someone you know needs a healthy dose of nature, visit discovertheforest.org to find out which park or forest is closest to your family. Acorns are not real currency, but that's okay because parks or forests are either free or super affordable. It's a truly economical way for the whole family to enjoy each other's company and bond beyond the confines of concrete buildings and rush hour. Thank you for staying tuned to Boss Lady News. Let's go ahead and take a, uh, let's listen to Brent. Do you know how wealthy you are? You are actually rich. And when I say rich, I mean you have the same as everybody else. And it's amazing because we stop and we think about all the wealthiest people in the world, and you're telling me I'm rich? Yes, you have money in the bank. What kind of money, what kind of currency? It's called time. Every single one of us has 24 hours a day to be absolutely amazing. Nobody, no matter how wealthy they are, has any more time. And the question is, what do you do with your time that can cause you to create your wealth? I'll be talking about that in each segment for today's program. T-I-M-E, time. You're wealthy, you've got currency. We'll be back. Now I want you guys to put your hands together for Celeste Vissier. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm Ooh. good. I wanted to first congratulate you, you on the launch of the book. And then I also wanted to find out, like, was you being an author something that you knew you were going to make your way into? Absolutely not. Can we, before we go there, hold on a moment. Uh -huh. Cut. As a mother, an author, and a, a therapist, did you think that you were always going to want to do a book to be an author? Was, was that something that you saw yourself wanting to do? No, didn't ever imagine being an author. It kind of came by accident. How uh, so? So I've been live streaming for about two years uh, where I talk about mental health things to help people understand their lives better. Mm -hmm. And in the process, I talk to people about coping mechanisms. And one of the ways that I've always learned to cope was to write. And I would tell people to just journal, journal. And people were like, what does that mean? Right. And so I realized people didn't really understand how to get their thoughts out on paper. So uh, I had already been doing these motivational quotes daily. So I decided that I would 
make it into a journal where each day I'm going to ask someone a different question or statement mm -hmm. that's going to allow them to kind of tap into their thoughts and reframe some of the things that they're thinking in their mind. Because right. a lot of the way we are acting is because of what we're thinking and we're not in tune to that. So, so mom first, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mom to therapist. Mm -hmm. How do you feel you're able to cope with that transition or do you feel like since you were maternal then kind of being that therapist just made sense is was there a segue into being a therapist no it's all i think it's all about balance i feel like i i have a lot of different roles that i play and because i live an intentional life at this point in my life it wasn't always this way i didn't I wasn't born a therapist. People say like, you're always smiling, you always have a positive attitude. And it's not because I was created this way, it's because I'm intentional about everything that I do. That's my word of the year, by the way. Oh, nice. Intentional <laughs> has been my word of 2018. It's important. So I think that that allows me to uh, wear the different hats where before I would, I've always worked with people. I would go to work and come home and be pissed off at home. And mm -hmm. it's like, how is it that I'm able to keep myself together at work? and then go home and be pissed off is because I wasn't being in the moment. And mm -hmm. so now I'm very intentional about every moment that I'm in. Wow. Yeah. When you say that, being in the moment that you're in, mm -hmm. I feel like the importance of mental health awareness, I know it's only a month that we really recognize that, but more and more, especially with this generation, mm -hmm. I feel like this emotion of having to just let it out mm -hmm. is, is where we are right now in the universe. So how do people be intentional and be in that moment? Because you have so many things going on in right. your mind. Right, and I feel like we become emotionally driven creatures because we're not dealing with it. So if you can imagine like a cup with like water in it, and that water is everything that I'm going through all the time, and then it fills up eventually it's going to burst. Mm -hmm. And I think with the way we operate life, we operate at the pace of society. So instead of us taking a, a day, a deep breath, 15 minutes, write in the journal for 15 minutes and really process what's taking place because we're so busy trying to climb the success model of what uh, success should look like. But right. for my thing of success is that internal peace and eternal happiness. And if you can take uh, daily intentional days because um, everyone's like, oh, when I go on vacation, I'm gonna, okay, I can't wait for vacation. I'm like, I can't wait six months until I'm able to feel free. Right. So right. every day it's like intentional for me where I'm processing. If today wasn't good, then I'm gonna make tomorrow better than yesterday. But we don't think that way. Wow. Yeah. You are the only person I know, uh, that I know at least, mm -hmm. who has gone onto Facebook and you said you do these vlogs. Mm -hmm. And I've seen a few of them and I've had to comment on a few of mm -hmm. them. But you're talking about how to be happy. Mm -hmm. And I feel like although people want to be happy, they look for that in, in buying things. Mm -hmm. They look for it in materialistic or going out or, you know, or going on vacation. Mm -hmm. How can people be happy in the society that we're in, you know, with the president that we have? Mm -hmm. How do people find that ability to be happy? And I think it could be really challenging, especially now in today's society. But I feel like if we don't allow this stuff um, to consume us. So I, I tell people, like, we have these senses in our body where my body tells me when I'm full. If I didn't have these senses, I would eat and eat and I would always get sick. Mm -hmm. When it comes to us as individuals, we are not... Um, we are not intentional on the way we are utilizing social media. Like technology is a great thing, mm -hmm. right? I'm able to do these vlogs, and but I feel like we don't have any self-discipline. Mm. So we go on and we look at these depressing stories. We look at these stories that make us feel incompetent and secure. And what do we do? We keep looking and looking and looking, and we don't know how to shut it off. Nobody's right. making you do that. You're choosing to do that. Right. And so I feel like if you want to learn how to be happy and in tune to yourself, you have to really be mindful of what you're exposing yourself to. That's important. Yeah. Be mindful of what you're exposing yourself to. Um, I want to make sure we get to your book because we're just going to cut to a brief break, but I'm going to walk over and grab this because 300 and 65 days of intentional living. I feel like this is such an important book that you could write. Mm -hmm. And in this book, you actually have 365 days and there's opportunities where people can write mm -hmm. in this. Mm -hmm. What made you think to make your book in this style? This is very unique. I've never seen anything actually like this. 
you have comments and spaces for people to actually be able to, to write in here. Uh, yeah, so, and then I also ask people every day, how are you feeling? And at the beginning of the book, there's an emotion chart, and I feel like the only feeling that we've been able to express is happiness, right? If somebody's sad, it's like you don't really know how to say it. If I'm feeling jealous, like, how do I say that? So because I'm not saying it, because I'm not identifying it, I'm acting out. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to figure out why my behavior is this way. Right. And so um, I figure each day um, can allow people to think clearly in a different way because I'm challenging people. It's really thought provoking. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. I have known you for some time. Mm -hmm. And when you transition from uh, working for someone else mm -hmm. to then working for yourself, mm -hmm. um, and we got one minute just before we go to a break, but it's not like you're going anywhere. Mm -hmm. How do you, um, or what would you tell people who are going from working for someone else to working for themselves? Stay out of your head. Stay out of your <laughs> head. Okay. Be consistent and be committed. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, even now I still have like, I have so many things I have going on and the negative thoughts come, but I don't let it marinate. Right. Okay. Right? I meet it at the door. Like, okay. Can't come in. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Okay. So that, I think that's important. Get, we get in our heads and then we stop. We'll get motivated, then we'll stop. We're like, maybe I can't do that. You know what I mean? So yeah. I feel like if you're trying to, whatever you're trying to do, because you're charting on uncharted territory, of course you're going to be in your head. Mm -hmm. So just knowing that is important because then you're able to challenge that. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to take a brief break, very brief. Um, we're here with Celeste Vissier. She is a mother, author, and therapist. You guys don't go anywhere. You're watching Boss Lady News. Getting you down? Hello. I'm Dr. Spruce. If you or someone you know needs a healthy dose of nature, visit discovertheforest.org to find out which park or forest is closest to your family. Acorns are not real currency, but that's okay because parks or forests are either free or super affordable. It's a truly economical way for the whole family to enjoy each other's company and bond beyond the confines of concrete buildings and rush hour. Hey everyone, I hope you guys are having a great day. You know you can catch me um, on all my social medias, Boss Lady News, Britt Johnson. And we're here right now with Celeste and we're talking about uh, her book, which is 365 Days of Intentional Living. She is a amazing mom. She is a therapist and an author. So I wanted to kind of touch base more on the concept of mental health awareness. Mm -hmm. And as a therapist, more people are really looking into speaking to therapists. Mm -hmm. um, in the communities of color, that's not something that we've always done. That's nothing, actually, that we've ever really promoted either. Mm -mm. No, because, you know, there's so many different reasons why uh, as black people, we don't go, you know, I grew up in church and a lot of it was like, pray about it, or that's a white people's problem, mm -hmm. or our socioeconomic status keep us away from realizing um, or getting the, the help that we need. Um, so I think, you know, that's why there's this um, disconnect with uh, people going to therapy, but I am seeing it more now. Yeah. 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 And when people are reaching out to you, mm -hmm to be um, someone that they can talk to. Mm -hmm. First, how can people get in touch with you? And then second, what are the first steps that you encourage them to do? So um, I have a private practice in Roxbury. Um, I've been in private practice for about two years. Um, so I'm always full at capacity because uh, I don't see more than a certain amount of people a day. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, when people um, first reach out to me, they're usually feeling stuck, or feeling overwhelmed. And just that whole process of, of just identifying that, you know what, maybe I should talk to someone can be challenging. Mm -hmm. Because when you're in your head with these things, like mental health is not tangible. So it's easy for you to, to say like, well, maybe I'll be fine, right? And so because like I grew up and I was a very depressed person, I wouldn't have, I would not have identified myself as depressed because I was working and going to school and living my best life. Mm -hmm. And um, it's not until I became older where I realized that, um, oh, Celeste, like, you were coping with your depression by working, by going to school. I was staying always, busy. I was always staying busy. Mm -hmm. And I think we only identify like uh, substance use or as as a way that like people cope. But there's so many different ways that society doesn't stigmatize 
um, that we um, go through and we stay in our depressed state or in our anxious state um, because of it. Right. Mm -hmm. So we have one minute left and I'm actually going to reach out to my audience and ask them to uh, give me a number. Give me a number. Somebody. Anybody. Yell out a number. 180. Less than 180. Well, I'm going to take the 180. I'm going to have to go with Brent's number, okay? <laughs> All right, let's see. Okay. Fine. 180. So day 180. If we start agreeing to disagree, it can honor our differences while offering a solution. Perfect for today. <laughs> for today's society right now. Absolutely. <laughs> and I feel like you guys, you have to really support support what's coming out of your your city, your state, your your neighborhood. Um, the people around us are amazing. This book will definitely be thought provoking for you and um, potentially change your life and recognizing if there's something deeper that you need to deal with. I want to say thank you for yeah. coming on. Thanks for having me. And I want to yes. have you back yes. because mental health awareness is so important. Absolutely. And I need someone who can kind of tackle that for our viewers. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. This was awesome. We're going to um, go ahead to uh, another break and we're going to have our next guest on, which is Catherine Yang. I'm so excited. You guys don't go anywhere, right? This is Boss Lady News. So how was work? It was 1,300 hours. My math class from 302 was in the trenches. Davy Roth had it the worst. Fractions were coming at him left and right. He just didn't get the damn things. Two days ago, I tried to teach him what one-fourth of one-half was using different sizes of blocks. Yesterday, I tried again by dividing up pizza. Both missions failed. Oh, no. But today, I was ready. I created a combat math game where the only way to beat the enemy is to outfraction them. Davy conquered every last denominator. My game was so successful, the principal is deploying it to math squadrons all over the school. Anywho, how was your day? Oh, uh, today my boss treated the office to salad wraps. Hmm, <laughs> salad wraps. No. <laughs> Thank you for staying tuned to Boss Lady News. Now, I know you guys have seen, you know, she does the Liberty Hotel events. She is an actress and she coordinates fashion events. You guys have been there with us. Now, we got her actually in the studio because every time I'm interviewing her, it's outside of the studio. So, Catherine Yang, welcome to Boss Lady News. And you brought Amy with you. Hi. Have a seat. How are you? Good, how are you? So thank you for actually coming to the studio this time. Oh, thank you for having us. <laughs> yes. Um, so I am excited to have you because I have always had and followed you for your fashion coordination events. And well, you know, for the viewers and for my, my studio, how did you get started with even wanting to do the fashion coordination events? I would say probably just by wanting to be in the know with fashion mm -hmm. and in order to be in the know I just kind of googled some things and I started volunteering for Boston Fashion Week, New York Fashion Week, just anything I could do grunt work. Right, right, right. Just to get me in the, in the, in door. the door. And <clears throat> I did that for a while and then um, when I, my last one I did was with 19th Amendment mm -hmm. and that's what really pushed me, motivated me to try say hey I can do this too yeah so with that I just I started it myself and then from myself I brought on Amy she's my first person I brought on to Boston Fashion Week and yeah our, our first show was at um, the Harbor Side for yeah. Boston Fashion Week yeah <laughs> accessory diaries is where people can go to find out about what you guys are doing what events are coming yes. up and fashion has been your passion for the, as long as I've known you. Yes. How difficult had it been for you to really get um, your own fashion coordination events kind of like popping? Very difficult <laughs> because when you're new and like in any startup, word of mouth, mm -hmm. any startup, especially you don't have the budget for advertising and marketing. Um, right now, great technology, social media, it's free. Right. Especially <laughs> Facebook, mm -hmm. Instagram, Twitter. 
So with those aspects, I was able to just blast out the company, mm -hmm. letting people know that you know we're small, but you know, we're a good company. You know, we treat everybody great. We welcome everyone to come to the events. It's for everybody. I feel that Boston Fashion Week and just putting on shows brings does bring a community together. It doesn't matter what gender you are. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter what you like to do. It's a great event just to come bring everybody together, get to mingle, network with friends, and just see a, a great show and music, dancing, whatever you feel like doing. Right. And Boston doesn't have like this huge fashion hub, but like you said, it's an opportunity to kind of network and really bring people Correct. together. Right. Um, I'm going to ask you, how would you describe your own fashion? Because you also do a little modeling and stuff. You guys can see that on our Instagram. How would you describe your fashion? My fashion, I, it's the way I feel. Mm -hmm. So if I feel like I want to wear a dress and do my hair nice and wear makeup, I will. And there's and also, if there's a day that I don't want to do nothing, just throw in a ponytail, <laughs> clip it, and just wear yoga pants and a t-shirt, I'm okay too. Yeah. Um, it's whatever I feel and whatever makes me feel happy, whatever makes me feel good. Yeah. That's my style. <laughs> That's amazing. Now, you've got Amy, and w I've met Amy. <laughs> We're familiar with each other. <laughs> so bringing Amy on, bringing on an assistant and someone who's willing to kind of really be there 100%, how was it actually saying, you know what, I need some help with this. I'm going to get some staff. Um, it was difficult because I am the type of person that you want something done, you do it yourself. <laughs> right. And I've been like that as far as I can remember, even being a, very, a child. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I do everything myself. Um, but with Amy, she's another version of me. Mm -hmm. And so I know I can entrust her and delegate, and I know things will get done. I'll pass two Liberty, actually three Liberty Hotel events, it's been all Amy. Mm -hmm. I just been overseeing and delegating it from from home and mm -hmm. she's been taking charge and getting the whole event done from beginning to end and and everything's always turned out great. Yeah. Amy, Hi. being tossed into the <laughs> fire, you know? How has it been for you um, being able to now take on these fashion coordination events? It's been great. Um, it's really rewarding. Um, it's nice because you get to learn to deal with all different personalities. So that's a good coping skill and, mm -hmm. you know, life skill. So it's great because everybody in fashion shows has you working with so many different people with so many different. Some people are more laid back. Some people are more high maintenance. Mm -hmm. Like it just and you can have the same those two people mixed in together. So you got to learn how to like maneuver those personalities to get everybody to do things on time. Right. And how do you maintain that? How do you stay the boss? I think it's just important to remind people in a very positive way that you are the boss. Mm -hmm. Like it's kind of like you if you want to do your own show, you can call the shots. Mm -hmm. But if we're doing it it, you have to listen to us. We're here to make sure that your show goes the best it can be and that it's on time and that everybody loves it. So right. we're not trying to, you know, be mean. Be mean. We're just <laughs> making sure that it's effective. it's effective. Nice. You guys aren't going anywhere, but we are cutting to a brief break and we'll be right back. You guys are watching Boss Lady News. Pre-diabetes. Pre-diabetes? I don't have time to eat right or exercise. I'm a busy mom. Oh, you're a busy mom. Yeah. This is great news. Busy moms never get prediabetes. Wait, what? Let me just... Yeah, this is all the people at risk for prediabetes, and way over here, busy moms. No? Whew. You guys are here, and we are talking with Katherine Yang and Amy. Amy, say your last name for me. How much? Palmachi. Now, Amy has kind of taken the lead with the accessory diary production fashion events. Mm -hmm. And being the former staff, now being the leader of it, how has that changed for you? Um, surprisingly, it really hasn't changed that much because our other staff member, Tiffany, um, she's amazing. And we work so well together. Yes. Um, she's great at taking directions and um, doing what I need her to do. And, you know, we just work so well that it's just like a smooth 
flow. Yeah. So actually, we got really lucky. So <laughs> I got really lucky. So it, lucky. Yeah, yeah, it's great. So it works out really well. So it's cool. it was an easy transition for all of us, I nice. think. Nice. Mm -hmm. Now, Miss CEO of Accessory Diary <laughs> Productions, since you've stepped back and you're overseeing your amazing business and Amy's taking it on, we know that you're all all into the acting and the camera and yeah. we love that the skit that you sent to us. Oh yes. <laughs> what are we going to be expecting next from you and how is the movie life treating you? So far it's been good, um, you know, going to auditions, <laughs> after auditions, um, you know, just being, just taking what, you know, you think that fits your role um, mm -hmm. from speaking, non-speaking, narrative to non-narrative. Um, I, I did get offer a role with Boston Castings for a Showtime series called Smilf. I don't yeah. know if anybody's heard of it. <laughs> it's, a, it's about a single mother um, who has a hard life, trying to balance a social life as well as being a mother and, and also, you know, the other the intimate part of uh -huh, her life, being uh -huh. a mother, you can't really have that as much. Mm -hmm. So um, <laughs> I, got, I got um, <laughs> I got a feature role in that, but due to um, circumstances, I wasn't able to take on that role due to I also work a full time job. Mm -hmm. So due to that, I wasn't able to take that opportunity, so I had to turn it down, which was a little sad. Yeah, <laughs> disappointing. Disappointing, but it's okay. I I usually get off first couple times a week so for me it's not a big deal. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. You can move on to the next one. Exactly. Um, I do have an audition tomorrow. It's for um, a piece in Manchester, New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be a comedy series and I'm, and I'm supposed to be the narrator of the entire movie. Wow. So, so we'll see how that one goes. That's awesome. <laughs> yes. That's awesome. When you decided I want to take on you know being an actress and I know that that can be um, very difficult because you are going to either be able to take some roles or you won't yeah. be able to take some exactly. roles. What's going to push you? What's going to propel you into saying, you know what, I'm, I'm going to move forward with just the acting. What do you need? <coughs> a good role. Mm -hmm. a, good, a, good, a good feature role and also a good paying feature role. Mm -hmm. And um, I love, you know, indie films. I love low budget, which is great, because that's actually what got my feet in the door mm -hmm. with um, Fairfield Follies, the one that I did that's actually being premiered August 19th. Yes. So that actually was my big break into the film, mm -hmm. film industry. So from there, I started doing, you know, other things like Stronger and Patriot's Day. Nice. And things of that nature, and also getting other auditions and getting signed with Don Here Models and mm -hmm. Talent, then being also on um, World Fashion Media News, as well as their June Model of the Month, which was extreme. I was really excited because I was not, I did expecting not know. Expecting that. I was not expecting that, yeah. to be honest with you, I yeah. was not. Um, so but congratulations on it. And congratulations on all your success. Um, we're going to continue to follow you and find out more because, you know, one day I'm going to try, I'm going to be like, cat. Yeah. Can I just get like a behind the, you know, just can I sit behind you kind of thing? <laughs> <laughs> we're expecting nothing but success for you, and Thank we're super you. excited. And Amy, we're going to be looking for all of the uh, Accessory Diary fashion production events. Please make sure I Thank get you. them. You will. Like, Definitely. That way I can either continue to host, because I got a chance to host one time, gal. It was amazing, but I had Neo with me, so it was like my co-host. <laughs> I'm like, he's not even one and he gets a co-hosting gig. Who does that? Yeah. <laughs> I want to make sure that everyone can find you guys. How can they find you on social media? Um, they can find us on Instagram at ACD Catter Yang, or they can find us on Facebook at Accessory Diary Productions. Yes. And Amy? Same thing. Follow Cat. Same follow cat. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So we're going to cut to a brief break, guys. And um, before we do, I want you to hear some more of the words from Brent Harding. Currency. Time, currency, wealth, rich, that's what we all have. And we have 24 hours of it. You know, it's the way that we utilize it that makes the difference, that actually can make us wealthy. And so sometimes I hear people say, oh, Brent, you're talking about time management. Yeah, I am. Do you realize how much time slides by us? And when we think about that, we ought to be saying, that's my money going out the window. Scheduling everything. Well, a couple of things you don't schedule. 
But for the most part, you know, schedule when you're going to do your social media. Schedule when you're going to have lunch. Schedule how, the time that it takes to get someplace because that adds up. And I'm going to be showing you how you actually can buy back some time. That's right, you can actually have more than 24 hours, but you won't know you've had it unless you start scheduling things down. It is absolutely awesome. So take out that infamous phone right here and start scheduling things out. And in the next segment, I'm going to show you how you can buy back some time and make some money with it. Be on the watch. I'll be back. Thank you for staying tuned to Boss Lady News. If you guys have been taking a look at this amazing outfit I have on today, this is by Royal Essence. Royal Essence designed this outfit and also the outfit that Katrina, our model, is actually wearing. And I fell in love with this picture, with this outfit on Instagram. It comes in red also, and this is an amazing cape. Okay, I'm going to stop describing the outfit to you, and I'm going to let Sherelle come on out here and describe it. Sherelle, why don't you come on out? I am a hugger. Grab a seat. So I just fell for your designs. I love what you're wearing today. I love what you've been making. What got you interested in wanting to be a designer? I'm, this is your first time on Boss Lady News. Yes. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. And I'm like, let's just talk about the clothes. Well, let's talk about you first, okay? okay? Yes. Are you originally from the Boston area? Well, I'm from... So I was born in Boston, raised in Lynn, and was just like in Beverly, Salem, then kind of migrated back to Boston. So you're officially New England. Yes, yeah, Cape Cod, fall, just everywhere. Awesome. Yeah. So when you were younger, did you see yourself being interested in fashion, in clothing? Actually, no. Mm -hmm. um, I, I made an outfit when I was like 17 by cutting up a pair of jeans and like creating like this crop top, like halter top type thing in shorts and got a lot of compliments on that. Mm -hmm. But didn't really see a future in fashion um, until I want to say probably like 2013, 2014, where like I just like God spoke to me and was like, go get a sewing machine. And I'm like, hold on. <laughs> I don't know anything about sewing, never picked up a needle and thread. And but you I gotta mean, listen when, when yeah. God speaks, okay? Mm -hmm. Gotta listen. Yes, nice. absolutely right. And that's what I did. And from there, I went from there to here and he just like taught me everything. Nice. So That's amazing. And your pieces are very well made. Thank you. So that is one thing uh, you guys know. I only seem to have designers on who really make their pieces. So it's not just a piece of fabric that's stitched together, yeah. but this is something that can be washed mm -hmm. and not fall apart. Yes. And that's important because that is a designer that knows how to be a seamstress also. Mm -hmm. That's quality yes. versus quantity. Now, when you were self-taught teaching yourself, at any point did you say, you know what, I, I don't want to do this, I'm not doing this anymore? Um, well, there's always times where like I would get tired and or just not feel as um, enthusiastic about it. But I feel like within the last year, um, I just been on it and I'm just like, no matter what, this is what I wanna do. This is a passion of mine and it's just a fire that is lit inside of me. And I'm like, by any means necessary. That's right, Yeah. that's right. By any means necessary, <laughs> we can get it done. Yes. When you started doing your fashion shows, when you started getting your feet into that scene mm -hmm. and really having to deal with different fashion coordinators mm -hmm. or dealing with different models, was it easy? Was it difficult? What would you say has been the challenge for you and has been the amazing moments? Um, I would say, uh, well, challenging being a mother of two mm -hmm. um, and being a single mother and now of two, and um, being up by myself, like when I go to these fashion shows, I'm like solo dolo. It's just me by myself. I don't have like an entourage. Um, and, you know, maybe one day 
you know, God will provide that person for me. Mm -hmm. But as of right now, it's just me. So I think that would be a challenge. Um, and some of the great things is just really getting my name out there, getting my, um, getting my work out there and letting people see who I am through my art, through my clothing. Yeah. Now, this isn't your only passion. Mm -hmm. Fashion is not your only passion. Mm -hmm. So what else drives you? So, well, my kids drive me, of course, um, and my 12-year-old and my 1-year-old, and I would say God, and I also would say I work with young girls um, uh, for an organization called My Life, My Choice, but mm -hmm. youth girls from the ages of 12 to 18 that are at um, high risk of sexual exploitation or have been sexually exploited mm -hmm. so that's another drive that's a that's my full-time job that I do outside of being a full-time mom and a uh, full-time designer yeah so you so. got three hats I I try to break all of my work down to yeah, three yeah so you got three hats mm -hmm. you have your mind body and soul mm -hmm. right yeah you got to feed all three of those right. um, now I feel like it's important that you as a designer and making clothing that that uh, is appropriate I feel like it's it's a passion that has helped you with what you do in terms of with these young ladies mm -hmm. because no matter what you wear and I will tell my daughter you can wear things that are inappropriate okay mm -hmm. but no matter what you wear that doesn't give somebody the ability to harass you right. or to um, exploit you mm -hmm. so how do you stay able to take care of all three of your passions Oh, that's a really good question, Britt. Um, well, I, I would just say like some self-care time, which I'm learning how to do more in my job. Like my supervisor, my boss, they push me like self-care, self-care. Um, my my um, clothing line, it's very therapeutic just to be able to sit down and sew. Mm -hmm. It's very therapeutic for me. It's like I can kind of get my mind off of things and just really focus on a garment or if I'm not doing that, I'm praying or going to church. Mm -hmm. um, or sometimes I'm just sleeping because, you know, I just need some time. Like, you need kids, your rest. Yep. Everyone, sh everyone take a nap. Yeah. I'm taking a nap too. <laughs> <laughs> Beauty rest is so important. Mm -hmm. And actually, um, there are some uh, entrepreneurs, very wealthy people, who actually say they nap periodically throughout the day, but they wake up extremely early. Yeah. I uh, had a meeting actually with Miss Brent Harding at 7.30 in the morning. When I woke up for that meeting, I thought to myself, did you really just do that? But I did. And you know what though? I am a napper. So periodically through the day, I'll, I'll go to take a nap. So let's talk about your inspiration. Yeah for this piece, if I could just take a couple more minutes, at least two minutes, your inspiration for this piece, because I'm just in love with this whole look. Okay, could you stand right here for me, Katrina? Thank you. So um, what inspired me, so the thing is, when I create a piece, it's not like I sketch it out, it's like something that like I can see in my brain. Mm -hmm. I'm not a good sketcher. So I see it in my head and um, it's like um, a journey, like when I get the fabric and like, I don't know, God's like, do this, cut it over here, sew over here, add this button over there. So that's how I create a piece. Now for this, um, this is part of my Rustic Chic line. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the colors, it's for fall. And I don't know, I just love the cape and there's wool in there. Um, and this is a stretchy it's knit. Fit. And the cape comes off, it's reversible. Mm -hmm. So yes, thank you, Katrina. You take yes, it take it off, girl. Would you like to? Yes. Oh, so it's literally reversible. Yes, it's literally reversible. And um, she just switched it around and it looks nice. Oh, wow. Yes. That is amazing. So what I really, really like about your line is, last thing, how did you come up with the name? Royal Essence. So I just consider myself to be royalty, like in God, and it's just the essence of the Lord. So... That's how I got the name. Um, I added garments to the end because it's my garments. So yeah. nice. Yeah. Well, how can people find out more and get in touch with you? So I am. Um, you can reach me on Instagram at Royal Essence Fashion, um, Facebook at Royal Essence, and Snapchat Royal Essence Garments. Nice.
And I also have a website, www.royalessencegarments.com. That's where we go to buy. Yes. <laughs> Please purchase. <laughs> All right, we're going to cut to a brief break. And you guys, you know, we've got a little bit more. Cuban Mike has some more buffoonery, and Brent Harding has some more advice. Don't go anywhere. <clears throat> hey, Hard, what's this? That's my resignation letter. You're resigning. Why? Because you're constantly ignoring me. You're half as active as you used to be, and you get stuff like this. You've been putting me under a lot of pressure lately. That's why I'm ready to quit. I, I forgot. I'll, I'll do better. Please, don't quit on me. Okay, but remember, it's not what you say. It's what you do. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Let's go for a walk. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to a stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. You guys, we're here with Sherelle Morrell. Am I saying that right? Morrell. Morrell. Yes, Morrell. Morrell. Yes. Okay, <laughs> correct me, because the reason why I shorten my name down to Brit is because people can't say Britannia. So always correct people when they say it wrong, okay? Yes. Um, your passion in terms of working with young ladies, you also have uh, decided to put a portion of the proceeds from your fashion shows towards more awareness for that. Can you tell us a little bit more about the nonprofit you work for? Yes, yeah, so My Life, My Choice, um, we serve about, I, wanna, I don't know ex the exact numbers, but I, I want to say around 150 girls right now. Um, what we do is we go around, we train law enforcement, um, just train them and so they're more knowledgeable, more knowledgeable f about, about mm -hmm. My Life, My Choice, I'm sorry, excuse me. Mm -hmm. um, and. We also do prevention groups, so we go to schools, we go to um, residential programs where uh, we are giving these girls about an eight-week eight, eight week curriculum mm -hmm. and um, just trying to prevent the exploitation altogether. Right. How does a young lady get herself into that situation? Or, I might not have worded mm -hmm. that right, how does a young lady find herself in that situation? Um, a lot of times it can be like a close relative, it can be a friend, it could be um, a guy that um, like coercion or um, will befriend them and act like they're, you know, their friend or their boyfriend and, you know, sooner or later they are um, being exploited mm -hmm. and sometimes they don't have a choice. I mean, a lot, all the times they, they don't have a choice, whether it's manipulation, forced, um, befriending. Right. And more and more, um, we're even finding out about uh, females who are exploiting mm -hmm. other females. Yes. And I feel like that's a, a, a category that is not broadly acknowledged mm -hmm. because everyone uh, always goes towards men exploiting women, but sometimes you have moms that yeah. exploit their daughters, mm -hmm. or you have um, female friends who are older friends that end up getting their younger friends into these kinds of situations. Mm -hmm. Now, when we say exploitation, what are we actually talking about? Sexual exploitation, mm -hmm. um, being victimized. Um, and, and the good thing is like with My Life, My Choice, when we're working with the girls, they're paired actually with mentors that um, have gone through similar situations that they can actually relate to. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually a mentor. So when I meet a girl, it's like I kind of tell them my story and they like open up like a flower. and. Yeah. They're like, oh my God, like you're where you're at. Like I can actually, I can do this. I can get through it. Yeah. Um, so. And I yeah. feel like that kind of also brings us back to mental health awareness, mm -hmm. right? Recognizing what are some of the situations that are trapped or locked in the back of our heads that we really don't want to acknowledge or deal with. Now, we only have about a minute left, but how does a young lady come out of that? How do we help them feel like there's there's more opportunity than and there's a door that they can walk through? Um, I think every uh, person's journey is different, and I think that just having that one person that they can identify with um, is good, and also having a support system. Um, and like I said, every situation is different, every journey is different, so it's something that has to click for them, and you know, it's a process. And I'm just like, I'm here, you know, I show up. As long as I show up, that's the main thing Someone for me. that they can depend on. Yes, because a lot of times they don't have that consistency. You know, a lot of these girls are in um, DYS, DCF custody, and, you know, they don't have family, so we're their family. Mm -hmm. 
Wow, that's amazing. And one more time, uh, how can people either reach out to find out more about the nonprofit or um, if they wanted to get one of these amazing garments mm -hmm. from Royal Essence, how can people get in touch with you? Oh, okay, so for My Life, My Choice, it is My Life, My Choice, Fighting Exploitation. Um, or you can just Google My Life, My Choice and it'll pop up. Mm -hmm. And my garments is Royal Essence Garments, so www royalessencegarments.com. Awesome. I know I got a couple people out there that are already looking to get a piece, all right? And I'm looking to keep this piece, so. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, we have some more tips and tricks for you from Brent Harding. Now, I did share with you that I was going to show you or talk to you about how you actually can get more time. So first of all, we started with the schedule. When you are working with that schedule, you be amazed at the time that you can save. But there is a trick to getting actually more time. And this has to do with your money. And you create a value. You say, what, what is my value? I'm worth $100 an hour. And I'm spending that $100 an hour cleaning or doing something However, there is somebody out there that you could literally be paying $15 an hour. So right there, you are losing the whole $100 and the $15. So how do you get it back? If you hire that person, that, that $15 an hour, and you bill yourself out at $100 an hour, you have added $85 to your day or to whatever it is that you're doing. So start thinking about what can you purchase that you are that will get you more time and you actually can increase from 24 hours a day. It could be 30 hours a day just because you delegated and you were willing to pay somebody else to get back your time. So I hope that you've gotten something from all three tips today and we'll see you the next time. do anything for kids. Yet one in six children in the U.S. struggle with hunger. Help end childhood hunger near you. Learn how at feedingamerica.org. Thank you for staying tuned to Boss Lady News. Just before you go, we're going to check and see what else Cuban Mike has for us because, you know, these celebrities and actors and all them, they be having their heads in a, another place. Cuban Mike, come on. <laughs> Hey y'all! Hey y'all! Hey y'all! Hey, All right. What's going on? Um, we got Damon Dash and Lee Daniels. Yeah, man. What's going yeah. on with that? There's like a money situation. Well, a couple of years ago, um, when Dame Dash did an interview, he talked about how he was a silent partner for Lee Daniels' movies, mm -hmm. and he gave him a couple of mills to help him fund his movies because there was a point that Hollywood wasn't messing with him. Right. And then his um, you know, his movies and his shows end up being successful, and he never paid the man. So he ran up on him on a date on a Diana Ross show. Uh huh. And basically, a concert, yeah. yeah, he was, he was like, "Where clip. my money?" Very good, my money. <laughs> and uh, Lee Daniels came up a couple of days later in the interview and pretty much confessed, like, "Yeah, I kind of did this to the man, and I got to pay him back." He was trying to okay. save face now. Okay. So, it was so like, at least you know, he admitted to he it. He admitted to it. So he said, "You know, I was wrong for that, and we're gonna do the due diligence to to pay the man. So hopefully, they get that situation." Taken so, care of. so what happened with Alicia Keys? I've been seeing these little pop-ups that she was there, you know, protesting or part of the <laughs> protest for, um, you know, keeping families together with immigration, which I'm sorry, I feel like there's an underlining issue that we don't know about because what's going on with immigration, they're sending the parents, they're sending the parents back but they're keeping the children here. The children are considered American citizens, especially if they're born here, but the parents are illegal. If we fight to keep the children and the parents together and the parents get sent back, now we're sending back American citizens because their parents are illegal. Yeah. So when you guys are protesting, know what you're protesting, what the pros and the cons are for that. But let's get back to Alicia Keys. 